So I'm at Somerville Airport again. Um, today I'm thinking we'll do a para story. So the other day, uh, or a couple weeks ago when I was flying here, I actually had a little bit of a run-in with the airport manager here. Um, some people complained about something that I did, and um, I'll get into all that, all the details of that, and then what I did to uh, resolve the issue. So it's a decent story, and um, it turned out pretty good in the end. But yeah, I'll get into that. Uh, weather today is winds are one gusting to fifteen, which what? Well, that's ridiculous. So um, I don't know. I don't know what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna definitely launch, but hopefully I get a decent amount of wind uh, to help me get off the ground because this wing is hot. Yeah, I'm just gonna cruise around some construction sites, um, which I have a story about that. <laughs> I was cruising around a construction site last night. I'll tell that story when I get up there too. That's a short one though. So. Yeah, so we'll start with that, and then we'll go into my uh, little debacle here at the airport. All right, peace. All right, so I'm about to walk out to the uh, motor and the wing, but like an idiot, you can probably see it in my truck, I did not bring anything to fly in, so we're flying and we're closed today. Unfortunately, I chose to wear all black today. Luckily, I remembered, or I didn't remember, but I had gym shoes in my uh, car, so at least I can run. Because running in my dress shoes would suck. All right. Yeah, I had to put everything as far out as I possibly could from these buildings and those trees on the other end. Um, when the wind's blowing out of this direction at this airport, you have to, it has to be, first of all, low wind speed. Because you get rotor, obviously. Um, so you got to push yourself as far out as you possibly can. You, we have tried to launch from between the runway and the taxiway, but with the relationship we have here with this airport right now, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna stay out of that area and launch from right here. Worked good yesterday. So, all right, I'm gonna conserve battery because I did not bring my spare battery because I lost it. I think I dropped it while I was flying. And uh, yeah, I'll try to get the takeoff, and we'll go from there. Peace. Okay, I think we're recording. I have no way to check right now, but we're all hooked up. Let's go. A little bit of wind would be amazing right now. thing takes off fast so I adjusted my brakes before I flew and they definitely need to be readjusted but we're good the tip toggles are pulling now as you can see it's definitely dragging a little bit it could take probably two inches out of the tip and yeah an inch out of the brakes will be good um, I'll just go easy with the trip, let them out slow. All right, so story number one, quick story. By the way, I'm so glad I got off the ground the first try. <laughs> Todd is going to give me shit to these shoes and these socks. Look at that. We know about that. Um, because I'm wearing black pants, so that would have had to suck to reset. Um, okay. So story from yesterday. I was, I flew, took off the exact same spot cut across, across this field and I went out on one of my usual flights. I didn't want to go anywhere new yesterday. I'm not going anywhere new today either. Um, but I essentially just headed out that way and was basically the only cool thing to fly around here, because look at all these trees, is to get up high, find some construction sites, because they're building home, uh, got to spit out my gum. They're building housing additions like crazy out here. The Somerville Charleston area is growing like crazy, so there's always construction sites cut out of the trees where they're building new neighborhoods. They're a great place to dip in and fly around. So I went back to this one that I usually fly to and 
they had built half of it, but the other half was not built. So I was like, okay, I'll just stay away from the houses, make sure I don't fly over anybody, and blast around these open areas of the construction site. So I did, and it was awesome. Just tons of tons of level ground where they're about to put houses. You can foot drag, carve around construction equipment. It's a, it's a good time. So I'm doing this. And as I'm coming back to the very far back of the neighborhood where they've just, just cut down the trees, so they haven't even uh, leveled the ground yet, I'm coming back out, and I see this car chasing me. So I look behind me, or I, or I look in front of me, or whatever, and she, she turns the corner, comes, slams on the brakes, and I'm only at like 30 feet, right? I'm flying right above the ground. She slams on the brakes, man. And uh, I'm like, man, this lady is a huge fan of paramotors. She really wants to get a picture. Nope. She was jumps out of the car. She's on the phone. I'm assuming with the police because she's pointing at me, screaming. Screaming at me. Uh, this is what I'm worried about with my high altitude, by the way. Look around here. If that guy's so low. Anyway, she's screaming at me. And uh, she's pointing at me to land. Point at the ground, screaming. I can't hear her. Obviously, I can just see her yelling at the top of her lungs. She's livid, and I'm. I give her the old, uh, "Hey, how you doing?" She just does not dig that at all. So I was like, "Whatever, I'll leave." I was. I had to go home soon anyway, so I left. Uh, but it was bugging me. I was like, "Man, I don't understand what some people's contentions are with these damn things." Like, I stayed away from everybody. I, Maybe I scared a dog. I don't know. I don't know what the hell I did, but it was bothering me. And so I knew she, I figured she was on the phone with the police. So I called the Somerville Police Department and uh, talked to a few people. Eventually got a hold of an officer and asked him if they had received any phone calls about uh, a low-flying aircraft in a neighborhood. And, of course, I had to explain what that what I meant by that, right? I, was, I fly a, a paramotor under FAR 103, which is the FAA regulation that we fly under that governs uh, our uh, our flight, and uh, I'm explaining this to him, and he just can't wrap his head around it, he's wait, so like a drone? I'm like, no. He's like, so you're in this aircraft? I'm like, yeah. He's like, and you're flying in a neighborhood? I'm like, yeah. I'm like, but I was in the construction area. I was like, I can assure you I didn't break any laws. I was like, you can look it up if you want. Uh, I don't be calling, because if you guys get a call... Now you have my number. You can call me and talk to me. He's like, he just wanted to keep asking questions about the paramotor, but I gave him my number, and uh, I felt I felt good about that. But then I realized the neighborhood was right by my neighborhood, so I was like, I might as well stop by and see the security guards there and just let her know what I was doing. And you know, I was gonna gauge if she was gonna be polite to me. I was gonna say, okay, I won't fly here anymore, but she was gonna be a dick to me. I was like, well, I'll see you tomorrow. Not really. But anyway, uh, I went back there and she was gone. So I did everything I could possibly do to, I guess, rectify the, the situation. But, um, yeah, we'll see. I, the cop didn't seem bothered by it. Uh, he, like I said, he was more interested in the paramotor. But. Okay, so this, this kind of goes into the next story. This next story happened maybe three, four weeks ago now. Um, came to the airport. I'm going to summarize this because I tend to talk too much. But... I came to the airport with my dad. Uh, my dad was living with, living with me at the time, so I was like, you want to wake up at, you know, 5.30, go to the airport for a morning flight? You know, he doesn't fly, obviously, but he likes to come to the airport, sit around, and watch the plane. So he's like, yeah, I'll come out with you. So I go out, and it's foggy, right? So we get we get there, and I call AWOS. AWOS the ceiling, you know, 1,200 feet, visibility. I don't remember, but it was way higher than a mile or mile. 10 miles or something on the ground. I was like, okay, I'm good to go. Called AWOS again right before I launched. Same thing. Same ceiling. But I did see the fog coming in. Right, I saw the fog coming in from, uh, I forget what direction, probably the east. It was coming in from the east. Okay. We're recording. And it's a gorgeous morning. We got fog sitting on the other side of the runway there, but I can see a mile that way, so I'm going to take off gain some altitude over the airport and see how deep this fog is. And I was like, okay, well, I better get off the ground soon. So I launched, and at that point, the edge of the fog was getting to us. Like, it was like this fog that was, like, 
the edges of it were fog, but the center of it was like a low, low cloud. Um, so I launched, gained altitude, went through the, the, the fog, still could see the ground the entire time. I'll, I'll overlay some video over this talking so you can see. But gained altitude, looked back, and I don't know, within two minutes the airport was covered. So I was like, okay, good. I'll just go fly for a while, and then hopefully it'll burn off before I get back. If not, my dad can come pick me up. And he's sitting in my truck. I fly around, do a whole bunch of cool stuff. Found an RC airfield, which was awesome. I gotta foot drag this runway. Have to. Oh yeah. That was cool. And then, as I uh, get back to the airport, I'm at like, 3,000, 4,000 feet above this giant cloud, which is only at like 1,000 feet, but it had moved. It's not over the airport anymore. So I'm over this cloud. It's a sweet cloud. I posted a picture of it. I'll overlay it right here. But it's this super long cloud that stretched all the way to that lake and went as far as I could see that way to the south. So I was like, man, this is freaking sweet. So I'm like, I'll call my dad and see how he's doing. So I call him on the Cena. He's like, hey, uh, I'm doing good. Uh, the airport manager came to talk to me and said, that I can't be parked here. I was like, what? He's like, yeah. He says, he just can't be parked here. He doesn't know who you are. And he doesn't, uh, you're, you know, he has no, no clue what I'm doing or something like that. I don't know. And I was like, well, that's strange because I've talked to the airport manager before. Called him to get permission to fly at that airport, in fact. And I had thought at the time that I had met him. Turns out I had met another guy who I thought was the manager. But anyway, I'm like, all right, I'll, I'll I'll come in and land and I'll, you know, I'll talk to the airport manager. I was done flying anyway. And uh, so I come in, I land. Dad says the airport manager in the hangar. I go in the hangar, and this guy, um, he's pretty worked up. He's pretty uh, irritated. And he says that people complained that I launched where the ceiling was at 100 feet. Uh, he you know, could have the FAA down here in 45 minutes to investigate me. Um, several people were witnesses, this, that, and the other thing. And the whole time he's telling me this, he's, you know, explaining laws and notums and AWAS. You know, I just let him talk. I didn't want to interrupt him. You know, I didn't want to tell him, look, I understand all that. I, you know, I know that I'm an ultralight pilot, so I'm not required to learn all of this, but I wanted to let him know that I did know. Uh, but I let him talk, let him go. I, and after that was over, after he was done uh, kind of going off on me, I was like, okay, well, you know, I explained, oh, God. That was same thing happened here yesterday, dude. What is going on over here? <laughs> this is weird. This exact same location, right when I get over this construction site here, I got smacked yesterday, too. With some, like, out of nowhere turbulence. It's not over my bump tolerance, but when it comes out of absolutely nowhere on a smooth day, it, I don't know, it, <laughs> it spooks me. I'm going to descend into this field anyway. Um, so, okay. Where was I? I don't even know. I'm talking to the airport manager. He goes off on me, lets me know that the FAA can be down here in 45 minutes, yada, yada. I explained to him the situation. I was like, look, you know, I, I understand the concern. I was like, just so you know, I did call AWOS. I did check. It said 1,200 feet. I was like, I have, and I had a camera on so I can prove if I have to that, I had visibility the entire time, and I explained to him, look, I saw the fog coming in. I had full visibility to the west. The visibility was limited to the east. So I launched, and I went west, and I flew um, in clear skies. I told him that. Um, you know, and I, we had probably a 30, 35-minute conversation. This, we just kept discussing this, and he had let me know why he was so worked up. And I guess the airport was under all this construction, and the lot's going on, so he's very busy, very stressed. And... Um, he also said that the uh, operations are ramping up at the airport, including IFR operations, jet operations, whatnot. So, you know, I kind of understood where he's coming from. There's been a recent robbery at the airport, I think, or an attempted robbery or something. So he's just very concerned. And where I had parked, I had parked at a what's called a teardrop on the taxiway. It's a um, it's an area for aircraft to turn around. Uh, I didn't think it was being used. There was like stuff piled up in the middle of it that an aircraft really couldn't clear anyways. I parked there. Uh, he just asked me 
you know, in a future park somewhere else. He also mentioned he was the manager of another airport that would be more paramotor friendly, and I could fly there. Uh, so I'm very appreciative of that. The only issue is that it's another 30 minutes away. So after work, I can't really, I can't do an hour, you know, especially in traffic, an hour, maybe 15 minute drive from my office to that airport. So I still haven't checked it out, but I, I plan to. Um, anyway, long story short, um, I did get permission to fly. I gave him my card and my contact. I got his contact information and said, look, man, if you have any issues in the future before you go call on the FAA or, or drawing conclusions, I'm like, now you know who I am. You know, I'm not some hooligan out here buzzing the airport, you know, kiting at the airport. I don't do any of that. I launch and I leave, you know, out of respect for the airport, you know. And, uh, you know, so, so you can call me now if you have an issue and let's try to resolve it. And I was like, I'll be more careful um, about where I fly. I'll be more conscious of the jet operation and everything. So it, was, it ended up being a pretty cordial uh conversation so uh, I was pretty pretty worked up about it at the beginning and I don't know man it's just I feel like this sport is so damn fragile like the FAR 103 is such an awesome thing but it's the, the unregulation of this sport is what is amazing about it but people take advantage of it you know just because there's not a law or a rule about it they go off and do crazy shit and then you know what do you think is going to happen well they're going to start regulating it so I don't know, man. It just it, it was a bummer, um, and with my relationship with the airport, it's so important to me because out here there's nowhere to fly, there's no field, there's that's it. Like this, this is not even. This looks like a field right here, but this grass is like 12 inches deep. It's muddy. You can't fly here. And it's owned by somebody, and then the rest of South Carolina is trees. And then you say, oh hey, what about the beach? The beach is fun. Yeah, the beach is fun, except. You're legally not allowed to fly anywhere at the beach in South Carolina. They have outlawed it everywhere. So <laughs> you can launch and fly to the beach, but you can't launch from the beach. So it's like, I don't know. It, there's just literally n nowhere to fly. So, yeah, it's just I was trying to relay that to the airport manager as well in my conversation, how important it is for me to preserve the airport. Oh, what major thing I forgot. The gates of altitude talk about it. All right. And it's freaking bumpy, so bumpy up here. I was not expecting it. All right, so finally what I did was we had a uh, a program at our at, at Cummins. It's called Every Employee, Every Community, Triple E C. Um, and it's a program where we get credit, I guess not credit, but we're allowed to leave to go do charity work, essentially. Um, and the Cummins, you know, you don't have to take a vacation. Day, so essentially they're paying you to do um, charity work, and there's a certain amount of charity work they look for every year. Um, and so we organize that as a group. As, a, as, as in my engineering group, we organize that. Uh, we go do it together. So like, aha, that's perfect. I was like, we don't offer the airport anything, which is another issue with paramotor. It's like, we usually don't buy fuel, and if we do, it's only a gallon. And we don't rent hangar space most of the time. So, you know, we... It's like we go there and use it. It's a public airport, so arguably you pay for it with your with your taxes, but you don't offer the airport any revenue besides that. So I told the airport man to that, and I said, look, let me see what I can do. So I talked to my group at work, and I said, would you guys be interested in volunteering? You know, there's, there's five of us, so, you know, five people, eight hours work, that's 40 hours, that's a work week, uh, of volunteer work at the airport. I'm like, we can do cleanup, we can do... You know, I told the airport, any construction help you need, if you need to, you know, whatever's going on, we cut the grass, we'll help out with anything. Um, and he said he would be interested in that. So, I'm like, perfect. So now I've done a little bit more. I've reached out, and I have, this wind is picking up out of nowhere. Look at this. Look at that smoke. It's like, it came out of nowhere, dude. Is it that loud? Is that some type of weather? Is that get jostled all over the damn place. Woo! I, uh, like I said, so I reached out. Uh, we're going to volunteer some time at the airport. I still have to organize it with him. So, yeah, it's all good. Uh, I'm going to, the GoPro's for sure going to die uh, by the time I land. So, I'll just let it run out. If I get the landing grade, if not, it's a bit. Please. <laughs>
still recording. Um, so that means I got my landing. You can see, I, I'm gonna I, probably my next video will be about this wing. I'm trying to talk quick because I don't know how much battery I have left. But um, I do not have the landings down on this thing yet, man. It lands uh, way faster than the 20 does. So this is an 18 Hadron, and I was flying the 20 prior. Um, in the air, this thing is, I mean, it's like night and day. It's it's amazing. Uh, but uh, man, I gotta get used to the the landings. Uh, in fact, the last time before I had shortened the brakes a little bit, I had no flare authority. I don't know if I'm short arms or whatever it is, but I I came in so hot I couldn't flare at all. I tried to run it out and came in on my knees. But uh, this time, right, I was kind of expecting that, so I flared early, which I never do. I usually am able to bleed that flare out pretty consistently. Um, so. Eh, something I gotta get used to. I'd love to find a field to just practice landing, launching and landing, but that does not exist in South Carolina. So uh, that's where we're at right now. All right, I'm gonna get packed up and I'm gonna let the GoPro die out. Still going. Yeah.